In this video we're going to add a simple HTML web pop-up to give us postcode address lookup functionality to virtually any simple HTML form. Here I am in Microsoft front page and you can see here we have a data submission form I've created earlier laid out in a table. So obviously I would add, want to add a find button up here so let's just type in find button into my table and we'll replace that with some JavaScript. So let's find our, let's create our JavaScript to create the functionality. I'm just going to the Simply Postcode website and I'm going to click in Login. If you haven't already got an account, you can create using this button here. But I always had already have an account, so I'm just going to log in using my postcode and password. Once you've logged into the um, account, you can see we're here we have a tab called My Buttons. If we click on that. We can see here we also have a button called Create New Web Pop-Up Button. If I click on that, then it wants a name for my button. And this is purely used for your own reference. So if you have more than one button, you'll see it in the list. I'm just going to call it Demo Button. Having pressed the Create button, you can see now it's listed that button in here. And it's told me it's in Setup Mode. So we want the JavaScript to paste into our simple HTML form. Let's select View Code, and there we can see the JavaScript, which we can simply copy to our clipboard. Then all we need to do is go back to our HTML web design package, and you see we typed in Find button there. We want to replace that with our JavaScript, so I'm just going to go into the HTML. I'll just put some extra space in so we can see the JavaScript sticking out. And there we've added the call to the Simply uh, Postcode web server to produce a find button on our web form. Now, of course, if we were using secure web pages, we would want to call um, the Simply Postcode web server using a secure page, else we'd get a warning from the browser saying we have non-secure items on the page. If that's the case, then we simply add an S in there to make a secure web call. I'm just going to stick to HTTP for now. So what we would do now is save that form and um, publish it to our web site in which case we should see this setup button here. It's important that you do publish it to the website because it expects to see it needs to write back to that page and in many design environments that will not happen. Having published our example web page to our web server and viewing it in a browser, it should look something like this. You can see now the code where the JavaScript is has been replaced. In fact, our server has squirted in a setup button into the page. So let's just number each of my address fields and we'll see why we do this in a few seconds. And then let's click the setup, which will enter the setup wizard. The setup wizard first asked me for my password, so you can see that the system's secure, and I'm just going to log straight in. Now you can see here, for a start, we can edit the description which we used um, initially, so we can see in our list of what buttons are which. Secondly, edit the title, which will appear at the top of the address search window, and the text that will appear in the find button. We may not want to find button, we may want to add our own graphics, maybe a nice pretty special font with an icon beside it, in which case we can actually specify the URL of the graphic. So the graphic would be stored on your web server and you would specify the URL of that graphic here. Restrict to URL, we'll come back to that later in a later section, which you'll see down on the left hand side of this video is under restrict URL and it's important to do that and the same with ghost page. So let's move on to the next section and at present we can only do a postcode search so we'll just skip all of that. Now it's asking me to map the address fields on my example form to the address fields that are coming back from our server. And you remember we just numbered those fields so if we expand, you can see there it's actually taken the um, field name information and the contents off the original form. So all I need to do is do a one-to-one -one mapping here. So 
so that was quite simple let's just have a look at the form behind so yes we haven't got a country field and of course on some forms we wouldn't have a company field in which case we could leave that blank I'll explain this in a later section okay so let's next that now it's just saying what would we like what country name would we like to be returned but of course we're not actually using that so we needn't um, needn't fill that section in by ticking this box we can tell the system to take the contents of the postcode field from your web page and populate it into the search box when the find buttons pressed so therefore the user can enter the postcode first and then press the find button to get the results let's press finish now it's just telling me that I need to refresh the page, my example page on my server, and also um, instead of using live credit credits, if you type in a postcode ZZ99, you will get example data back from our server, which will cost you nothing. So if I press the close button, you see the windows closed, and as it said, we need to refresh the page. So we either press F5 or refresh. You can see now the button has changed from setup to find address. So now if I click on it, we should have postcode searching facilities. So if I enter a postcode and press the find button and select an address, you can see now it's written back the address to my example page. Now let's say we want to write the address back to our example form in a different format. What we're going to do in this example is we're going to write the company name to company field the rest of the address except the postcode to this field here, line 1, and the postcode down in the postcode field. To make this change, obviously I need to go back to that setup wizard we saw earlier. And this can easily be done by pressing the find button and going to the search window. Then we type setup in the postcode field. This then tells the system that we want to enter the setup wizard, and obviously we need to password control that, so that's offering me there my user password. So that's the password we used earlier to log into the Simply Postcode website. It's now telling me I need to refresh my example page. So let's press OK. Of course we could press F5 but I'm going to press the refresh button on my browser and now we can see we've gone back to the setup button. So now when I click that again it will ask me for my password. And I can simply log in and access the setup wizard. So I'm just going to go to the field mappings and here we are in the field mappings. So we said here we wanted to write the address back to the same field so I'm just going to select all of the address to that second line, that field T2. But of course we need to separate that and on the right here we have options for separation and I'm going to select comma for all of those fields. Now all we need to do is next the rest of the wizard and finish it. And again it's telling me there I need to refresh the page behind. So let's refresh the page behind and you can see now it's turned back to a find address button. Let's click on that and do an address search. And now we can see the address has been written back to this line, all separated nicely with commas. And of course we could do that with a memo field and a new line. In the earlier video in the setup wizard, we skipped over the restrict page field. It's very important that this is um, activated because it stops people pinching the JavaScript we added to our web page and using it on their own website. So how does this work? For instance, I'm on a URL at present called postcodeondemand.com. Let me just copy that to the clipboard. Now I'm just going to enter the search and I'm going to go back into the setup which we saw us doing earlier. So I just refresh the page. Go into setup. Now what I can simply do here is enter any part of my URL into the restrictor URL field. So basically our system just looks at the incoming URL and says does it contain this word. If it does then it allows the search to happen, if it doesn't then it won't. 
One last point, and a very important point, is the use of the ghost page. I'm just going to enter the setup again and log in. And on the first page of the setup wizard, we will see here it says ghost page. Now what it is, is it's a good idea to create a ghost page and I suggest that you call it something like ghost page 1. Now what this means is you create a HTML page, just one simple page and in the body of that page you put the script that we used on the find button. Okay, so you create one page, in the body you put the script that we used to create the find button and then you save it as ghost page 1 say and then you enter that name in here and what that does is it allows our server to call back to that page and then that page relays the information into your page this is done to get around some security restrictions within browsers because browsers don't allow one domain to talk to another domain so one page cannot write necessarily the information back to another page depending on the user's security settings within the browser so this is done to get round it if that sounds all very complicated if you click on the help option at the top here you will see we will go to the help page on our website which explains all about this integration and down at the bottom here you'll see there's quite an in-depth explanation of ghost pages and why they're required but essentially they're very simple all they are is a page with a JavaScript squirted in there saved and popped into that uh, wizard as we just saw.